the first week of spring and granny's whomping up her tonic for to give to all the family and her kin though it tastes mighty bitter it is good for man and critter cause it gets your blood to running free again <laughs> granny's brew it's good for you if you're off your feet you ought to have some too even Pa leaves his fiddle, he just sits out front and whittles. Cousin Jethro, he's a-sleepin' in the shade. Instead of doing her spring cleanin', on her mop Aunt Pearl's a-leanin'. Granny better get that batch of tonic made. There's the gong, won't be long. Till the family's back to feeling good and strong. Line up, everybody. First come, first serve. One, two, three, and four. All right, Pearl, go ahead. <laughs> All right, you should go first, Jed. You're the head of the family. Oh, no, no, Pearl, I ain't in no hurry. Uh, how about you, Willie Mae? Oh, no, Pa, I was the last one in. <laughs> well, I take it this family don't want to take my tonic? Oh, oh my no, Randy, it's, it's good. Oh, delicious. Well, then step up, somebody be first. Well, Pearl, uh, go on ahead. Uh, women and children first, that's the rule. <laughs> that's the rule for fire, flood, and disaster. Well, it seems to me Granny's tonic ought to fit in there somewhere. <laughs> I heard what you said, Jed Clampett. And just for that, when it comes your turn, you're going to get a double dose. Now, step up, somebody, and get at it. Hey, I got an idea. How about letting this little fella go first? He looks kind of puny. Yeah, he's been acting kind of poorly lately, Granny. Tonic him first, Granny. Sure seems to like it. You want some more? No, I reckon that's enough for a little critter like him. <laughs> yes, sir, best batch I ever made. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, these papers are ready for Jed Clampett's signature. Oh, incidentally, you did a fine job bringing his file up to date. Mr. Drysdale, I wish to give credit where credit is due. Most of the work on the Clampett file was done by Miss Buckles here. <laughs> hmm? Buckles? Who's she? A comparatively new girl chief. But already she has displayed those qualities so rare in the modern girl. Eagerness to learn, willingness to work, loyalty to the bank, <laughs> devotion to duty. All right, all right. How much of a raise does she want? Oh, no, Mr. Drysdale. I, I didn't do it to get a raise. I did it because I'm sincerely interested in my work here. And I'm determined to become the best and the second best <laughs> employee in your bank. You hear that, Chief? Rare devotion to duty. <laughs> and Miss Buckles worked on the Clampett file in her own time. Very praiseworthy. All right, what's Mr. Clampett's present balance? $34,783,127.34. That's not including the oil deposit due today. <laughs> well, you are familiar with his file. I feel that a job worth doing is worth doing right. Unlike so many others, this girl is not here to find a husband. She is here to work, right, Gloria? Right, Miss Hathaway. You may call me Jane. All right. Take these up to Mr. Clabbit. Now make sure he signs in all places indicated. Right, Chief. Miss Hathaway, your time is so valuable, and I know that Mr. Drysdale needs you. I would never be missed from the secretarial pool. Do you hear that, Chief? Is she a rare fine? I just try to be like you, Miss Hathaway. Jane. 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 Chief, if it's all right with you, she is familiar with the papers. Huh? Oh, fine. Yeah, fine. And Gloria. Yes. You must take my car. Oh, no. Oh, Hathaway, tut, tut, tut. I insist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Buckles from the Commerce Bank. Oh, it's mighty nice to meet you. I'm Jed Clampett. You? Yes, ma'am. But I was looking for a, a much older man. <laughs> Ain't no older men around here. Might could scare you up one in the neighborhood. Seems to me I seen an elderly fella down the road a piece. No, no, I, I simply meant I, I couldn't believe that you were so young. Well, maybe it's because I ain't. But you look so young. <laughs> You do look young. Is that a fact? He's holding his tonic, but that ain't all. Well, your granny has seen it with my own eyes. That girl is young enough to be his daughter. And you say he gave her a hug? Grabbed at her like a crawdad grabs bait. <laughs> that old mountain goat. I didn't figure on him running wild. Your tonic. You shouldn't have double dosed him and him being a widower so long. Oh, Jim will come to his senses. Hmm, I don't know. There ain't no fool like old fool. Jim ain't old. He's old enough. But he ain't too old. And that's where the danger is. <laughs> You're making a hill out of a haystack. Granny, I got a good look at this girl, and I'm telling you right now, that ain't hay. <laughs> Big city article. Not the kind of girl that Jed's used to meeting back home. Oh, girls as girls, city or country. They all come out of the same catalog. <laughs> Maybe so. But the city girls make it look like there's more in the package. Granny? Pearl? Oh, there you are. See what you mean, Pearl? She's wrapped tight and tied loose. <laughs> I want you all to meet Miss Gloria Buckles. This here is uh, Granny and uh, Cousin Pearl. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you, ladies. Howdy. Hi. <laughs> well, uh, ain't you just about the prettiest thing you ever did see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Favors Ellie a lot. Just about her age, too, wouldn't you say, Granny? A mite younger. Mm. <laughs> Who's Ellie? His granddaughter. I mean, my granddaughter. She's Jake's daughter. Oh, are you married, Mr. Clanford? I'm a widower, ma'am. Yeah, poor old Jake. I reckon he's come for another dose of his lumbago medicine, Granny. I reckon. Poor old feller was up all last night with the misery. A moaning and a groaning and a walking the floor. The poor old fella is past the point where liniment does him any good. Slays his four feet all bold. Now, girl, that's just about enough of that. You both know I never had a twinge of the miseries in all my life. Knock on wood. Pearl. His mind is wandering again. <laughs> Baby call Granny. He missed his nap. I want to apologize for them two, ma'am. They both just think they're being funny. Well, I know what you mean. I have some elderly relatives like that myself. <laughs> it's such a beautiful day. Why don't we go for a drive, Jed? Thank you, ma'am. I like that, uh... Gloria? <laughs> she called us elderly relatives. Never oh, mind that. It's what he called her and she called him, and now she's going to get him out alone in her car. Let's get in the truck and follow him. We can't drive. Oh, I don't want Jethro getting no ideas from his uncle. Don't forget, he's been tonic, too. 
he has nothing to worry about. Jed's a man that can keep his feet on the ground. Once he gets his arms around that girl, won't much matter where he keeps his feet. <laughs> By dinghies, ma'am, if you hadn't brought her to a halt right when you did, we'd have gone right over that bluff. I'll get out and push her back on the road. Oh, no, no, Mr. Clampett. I stopped here purposely. Oh? How come? Well, it's so beautiful and I'm so lonely. Pretty woman like you. Why, I'd think these city boys would be standing in line for you. Boys, yes. Men, no. Well, I've seen them here all ages. Well, I'm afraid that years alone do not turn a boy into a man. I reckon I know what you mean. I blame that city down there. Something about it seems to close in on a boy and, and keep him small and immature all his life. I show me a boy that's grown up in the country, in the mountains especially, and I'll show you a man, a real man. You're going to think I'm making this up on account of what you just said. But I grew up in the mountains. No. Yes, ma'am. Don't let that Beverly Hills mansion fool you. I'm a mountain boy, born and bred. Of course. Of course, I see it now. I see it in those cool, clear eyes, unclouded by smog. Eyes that have looked beyond a city skyline and, and seen the, the truth and beauty of nature. I see it in this rugged, handsome face. I see it in these strong but gentle hands. Hands that have dug into the good earth, put life into it and brought it forth. Hands roughened by honest toil. Take another look at the face. Oh, Jed. What have you done to me? Nothing, man. Oh, yes, you have. You've sentenced me to a life of loneliness. A life without love. A life unfulfilled. Well, I don't know what you mean, ma'am. Honest, I don't. I'll tell you what I mean. You've set a standard no man could measure up to. A goal I could never achieve. Having met you, I could, I could never care for a city man. Those weak and puny clothes dummies with their, their narrow suits and their narrow shoulders and their narrow minds. Please, ma'am, I... I have felt the muscles of a mountaineer ripple beneath my hands. Do you think I could ever be happy with anything less? No. I shall never marry. Better an old maid in a life with a man I could neither love nor respect. Ma'am, don't feel that way. Pretty woman like you, smart and all. Why, it'd be a terrible shame if you was to never to get married and raise a flock of young ones. No. <laughs> Please, ma'am. I'd feel terrible if I thought you was wasting your life this way. Please change your mind. <laughs> Well, Miss Gloria, if you're determined to marry a mountain man and none other, and unless you do it, your life will be ruined, maybe, and I get to know you better, I might could find a way. Oh, Jed. No, I ain't making no promises, but uh, you set me to thinking. I reckon we'd best get back home and everybody get better acquainted. Oh, those are some papers Mr. Drysdale wants you to sign. Well, uh, come on, let's get in here and get busy. You've got a lot to do with signing and dancing and getting better acquainted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon the first thing I better do is sign them papers you got for me. Uh, yes, yes, that's a good idea. Is she 
wearing a wedding ring? <laughs> Wait till she gets her gloves off. <laughs> Don't see one. Good. Then they ain't been to the preacher. <laughs> what is old Emily anyway? Well, now this transfers your money from one account to the other. And this, this is your last will and testament. They ain't been to the preacher. But they've been to the lawyer. And that's just as bad. Or worse. We gotta stop him. <laughs> oh! <laughs> there you are, Jed. We've been looking all over for you. <gasps> you give the doctor a terrible fright disappearing like that. <laughs> yeah. He was afraid you might have fell in the cistern again. What are you talking about? Why, Jed Clampy, shame on you. You know the doctor don't want you to have nothing sharp. Girl, what in that blue No, 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 don't get excited, Jed. Doctor says it ain't good for him to get excited. Well, what, do you, what do you, what do you... Oh, I almost forgot. Come on into the parlor. Got a surprise for you. A surprise? Come on. All right, what's a surprise? Well, the surprise is what, what Pearl and me found out about that woman whilst she was gone. What'd you find out? She's a spy. A spy? <laughs> For one of them foreign nations. Which one? Minneapolis, Wisconsin. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Drysdale. We didn't know who else to call. But we think this here woman's trying to get Jed money. Well, she, she says her name is Gloria Buckles, but I don't know the... Ah! <laughs> oh, well, yes, sir. Yes, sir, we will. Bye. Mr. Drysdale must know that woman. He's a-coming right over. All gonna marry up with her? Oh, child, we hope not. We pray not. Why, Granny? Well, I gotta look at her, and boy, she's pretty. <laughs> Beauty is only skin deep, son. Well, she must have awful deep skin, because every place I could see was... Oh. <laughs> now, Mr. Drysdale says we's to keep her here till he comes. I'll watch her, Ma. You watch your car. <laughs> What'd you say this one was called? This is called The Twist. If the feller was to dance this in a fresh plowed field, he'd order his way right into the ground with it. <laughs> hey, Jethro, come on in. You want to dance? I'd he'd rather dance with her, Uncle Jeff. That's what I had in mind, boy. Miss Buckles, this here is my nephew, Jethro. Hiya. You teach him that there twist, and I'll teach it to Ellie Mae. This is my daughter I've been telling you about. Oh, what a beautiful child. You and I are going to be such good chums. Ma'am, I think he meant for you to dance with me. <laughs> We're in time, Chief. There's my car. Yes. Now, where's your protege? That loyal, devoted, hard-working gold digger. I still can't believe it. So shy, so retiring. Mm. She'll be retiring if she hooks Jed Clampett. <laughs> well, huh? Yee-haw! Go on, Mr. Jed! This is fun! Yes, Ro, I reckon you better answer that door. Okay, Uncle Jed. Well, howdy. How do you do, ma'am? I'm sorry to intrude. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Come on in. Dig yourselves a hole. <laughs> Gloria Buckles. Huh? Where? 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 There. Oh, I thought it is. You imposter. Jezebel. <laughs> you go, digger. I have a bulletin for you two. You better be nice to me, or else after my wedding, you may lose your largest depositor. Wedding? Mr. Crampett. Have things gotten as far as actually discussing marriage with this woman? Well, yes, Mr. Drysdale, we have. Her and me had a nice long talk about it, and that's the reason I brought her home, so she could uh, meet the family, kind of get acquainted. But, but... This pretty young city woman says that unless she can marry a mountain man, she just ain't gonna get married at all. I think we all agree that'd be a terrible waste. <laughs> Should we set the date now, Jed? 
Well, yeah, near as we can. I'd say everybody willing that it'd be in about uh, three or four years. <laughs> three or four years? Yeah, be that long before Jethro's 21. Jethro? Jethro? Hot diggity dog, I got me a wife! Dad, bring him back! Pa, ain't you gonna marry up with that city woman? No, L.E.S., old foxes is trap shy. <laughs>